DSP, DSP, DSP. What is DSP? Who is DSP? Why is DSP? You may have heard of this term popping around at times and probably never fully understood what it is. To the audio nerds, I can just simply say, hey, DSP is EQ, but that's simply adding on another acronym for those who aren't in the know. So today, in this video, in light of DSP becoming a new trend, I feel like it's now my duty to explain exactly what this weird acronym is. So uh, watch the video. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Lin So Yes, this is an ad read. Navigating the online chai fi world can be a bit of a daunting process. After all, there are so many retailers, so many sellers, you're absolutely spoiled for choice and to a point where you just simply don't know who to trust. Here, allow me to introduce you to Lin Sol, one of the oldest players in the online chai fi retail space. With an extensive catalog of headphones, IEMs, DACs, and amplifiers, you can be sure to get the absolute best bang for your buck out of their catalog. And even more than that, they ship virtually everywhere and for free. So what are you waiting for? Go to linsoul.com, tell them I sent you, support the people who support me. DSP products have been gaining traction recently. For example, with the Moondrop Fox DSP, the Jew DSP, Panya DSP, One DSP, so and so forth, you get my point. So I've been seeing this question a lot, which is again, what exactly is DSP? The simple answer that I like to give to the audio notes is that DSP is simply just EQ. But such an explanation is not really satisfactory for a normal person because that is simply just throwing yet another acronym into the mix. So DSP is short for Digital Signal Processing, but that doesn't really demystify or explain what exactly it is. So to explain what it is, I first have to explain what is the first word of DSP, which is Digital. You see, every time we listen to music, there's always a chain that the music needs to flow through. First, we start at the music file, which could be MP3, flag, or simply just streaming from your Spotify slash Apple Music, etc. From there, the music file is decoded at what we call the digital to analog chip or DAC for short. You see, we are not digital beings. We experience things in an analog world. We don't hear or feel things in ones and zeros. So that's what the DAC does. It takes the ones and zeros that come from our music files and changes them into analog signals. From there, the analog signals are amplified with what is called literally an amplifier, and that's how we hear the music. Now let's talk about how to change the sound of an earphone or a headphone. A simple example I like to give is that, for example, with a headphone, if you change the pads into something different, for example, from velour into something like leather, you have effectively changed the sound of that headphone. The same thing also applies if you're using something like ear tips. For example, if you've always used silicon ear tips and then you change into foam ear tips, you have effectively changed the sound coming out of that earphone. All of this is what we call analog tuning because you are changing the parameters physically. It's you're changing the housing, you're changing the tips, you're changing everything but on a physical real-world basis. Digital tuning, on the other hand, is how you would change the sound of an earphone using software through the DAC, which I had explained previously. So let's say if an equalizer app on your PC, on your Android, on your, not the iPhone, unfortunately, every time you're changing something on that EQ app, that is technically a type of DSP. Essentially, again, you are changing the sound of your earphone, headphone, speaker, whatever it is, through software. Now we come into the products where all of them are saying, hey, we are using DSP, DSP, DSP. What exactly is DSP in this context? Now you see all of these DSP products typically come with a USB-C connection. What this means is that within the connector itself houses the DAC and the amp chip. And what the chip does is that it is processing the signal before it reaches the earphone, which is analog. What this also means is that you don't have to install an equalizer profile into your PC, into your Android or whatever for this DAC chip 
to implement its own equalizer profile into the earphone that you're listening. So the manufacturer has a lot of flexibility in how to tune the earphone with DSP or equalizing it. Because by its nature, a digital EQ would allow you to do a lot more things than you would be able to do with simply analog tuning. And look, as someone who is involved in the manufacturing process of IEMs and to a certain extent headphones as well, analog tuning is difficult very difficult. In the case of IEMs, there are many small things that would affect the tuning of the earphone itself. For example, the tubing length, the, the tubing diameter, the drivers themselves, the venting, the housing, all of these little things would eventually affect the final output of the earphone. And even beyond that, just simply trying to target a specific area in which the earphone is deficient in, sometimes it's simply impossible because there's no amount of changes to the housing or changes to the tubing that would allow you to target a specific frequency response. I would know, I'm the one who's involved in the creation of many, many different IEMs, and I would know exactly the kind of hardships that a typical manufacturer would have to go through in order to tune an IEM to their specifications. So in a way, when it comes to DSP, all of these things are kind of null and void. You don't have to worry about the analog stuff too much. If stuff is like, oh, I can't do this, you can simply just kind of fix it in post in a way. Just slap on a DAC chip with DSP capabilities, add on your equalizer profile that fixes the small little problems, and there you go. Easy peasy. Kind of, but not really. Which is what you see when it comes to DSP equipped IEMs. A lot of them tend to be on the lower end of the pricing scale because it is simply cheaper to fix something on DSP rather than go through the whole nightmare of tuning it analog. That said, there's probably a lingering sentiment on many of your minds. Does that mean that DSP is a crutch? Not really. I know some of you would now have the instinct to disregard any DSP equipped IEM because as I said, it's simply easier to do it digitally rather than analog. But the thing is, as a consumer, you're probably using a DSP thing right now. If you're using a wireless headset, a Sony, a Bose, an Apple AirPods Max, for example, you are 100% using a device that has been tuned with some form of DSP. If you're using a true wireless earphone, an AirPods, a Galaxy Buds, God forbid, a Raycon, then yes, unfortunately, you are using a device that has been tuned with some form of DSP. And that is not to say that DSP, again, is bad. It is not. It is simply just a different way of tuning a headphone or an earphone. The problem that comes with all of these wireless headphones or earphones is that you have to take into account stuff like the battery, the circuitry, the printed circuit boards. All of these things take up space and also have an acoustic effect on the drivers themselves. All of these manufacturers have to play this kind of fucked up Tetris in order to build their product. And when they do that, the first thing that usually gets thrown out the window is acoustics. Because let's face it, consumers don't really care too much about it. So how would you fix these kinds of problems? You can't do it analog because again, you don't have the space for it. So what these manufacturers do is that they simply add on a DSP profile, an EQ profile into the DAC chip of their headphones or earphones. The profiles fix the large gaping flaws in the acoustics of their product and therefore provide the consumers a response that they would most likely be palatable towards. And that is not just to say that it is used in consumer electronics. Nowadays, when you go into a studio recording room and you see all those nice speakers that are laid in front of you and probably costing tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, a lot of them are actually using DSP. To some people, that is an insult, but as a guy who's practical, as a guy who just looks to performance, these DSP equipped speakers are some of the best speakers that can be had right now. Simply because of the fact that digital crossovers can be as precise as the engineers require them to be, and they don't have to worry about capacitors or resistors being out of specification. So in some regard, DSP is going to be superior. You don't have to worry about the fickleness of the analog world. All you have to do is just input the values that require, and the DAC chip would simply do them 
as you ordered. And so that's it. DSP is simply just EQ. And now hopefully you would understand the explanation behind what is DSP is EQ. Some of you now may be asking, Krin, what exactly is equalizing? EQ, equalizers. I have a video, I have a video. Watch that video. Should explain majority, most of what I'm trying to explain to you. And then from there, watch this video again. And that's it. That's my explanation of what DSP is. Essentially, it is what it's short for. Digital signal processing. You are processing the digital signal before it gets converted into an analog signal. How you do that is most likely through EQ, where you are changing the sound of whatever signal you're going through and making it sound whatever you like. You can Boost the bass, boost the treble, drop the mids, whatever you want. As much as people would like to call it a crutch, I respectfully disagree. There are simply some things that cannot be fixed in an analog sense. And what do you do then? You can either just ship it out half-assed, or if you have the choice, fix it in post. And with that, let me just shout out my big money boys. Here are all of your names because you have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon. And for those who have subscribed to the $30 tier, allow me to speak out your beautiful names. Dennis, McMatrix, Krenagel, Andrew, Positronic, Drizza, Seraphim, Like Pizza, Chemotherapy, Daryl, and Carl. I thank you all. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever doesn't offend you. Uh, see you next week. Don't die. Right? That, that, yeah, works? Yeah, that works? That works? Okay, that works. Fuck off.